morning guys, welcome back to another episode of Wild Reaches. So it's actually Saturday today, which is, as you all know, we release content every single Saturday at 3pm. And right now it's Saturday morning, we haven't filmed anything yet, and quite a few of you have been asking for this, like a rundown or a boat review on our Stesco Tripper. Our little Stesco Tripper that we tow everywhere. It's just this trusty little reliable um, little home on the water that we just, we absolutely love this thing. And um, yeah, quite a few of you have been asking for like a walkthrough of how we built it and why we built it the way we did and, um, and all these other questions. So I'm heading to the river now to meet Dan. The weather is looking atrocious. It looks like it's gonna buck it down any second. So hopefully we can pull this off. Guys, we're back in the tinny. Um, we're back at home, we're not up north. Quite a few of you have been asking what sort of boat it is and why we fit it out the way we did. Um, and then a bit more detail on the fit out. So I think it was, was it episode two? Episode two, I think, where we did on the actual river in the Wenlock. We did like a, well I did a bit of a walkthrough of the, of the boat. But it had all our gear in it, so we thought we'd do another one. Um, and a few people, yeah, have asked about what materials we were using and to slow that down because I think episode three or four I did like a fast forward sort of segment of the tinny being built well the fit out being built so you this is it. Crocs here? it looks like it eh? <laughs> <laughs> nah there's no crocs here I wish we were up north I I once you get back in the tinny I'm like oh yeah. I don't want to be back up yeah. there <laughs> let's throw the swags in and go so where do we start it's a Stesco tripper that's where we'll start um, this is the 3.75 We'll check that. And it's we'll pull the stickers off. Everyone gets the one side of the boat. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a 3.75 Stesco Tripper, which is basically built as a roof topper. Um, Dan and I use it on a trailer, and we've kitted out for big long trips. Um, if you watch episode one to six, we live out of this little tinny for about six days as we drift down a river in Cape York. Um, so we'll start at the front, up in the bow. Storage. Storage. So we've got. And a compartment here on each side and basically up the top here is full dry storage perfect for tackle boxes you know radios epurb all that stuff you want to you want to keep dry and then all our charging points are in here so we've got double usb and a cigarette socket on either side um, and then this is our little battery meter which tells us how much charge is coming in from the solar and how much charge is coming out as we charge the drones and the gopros and stuff that worked really well, eh? Yeah. That was a good setup. Yeah, well, you had like, to have yeah. it. Like, yeah. six days on the water where we're filming every day. Um, we've gone through so many batteries, and you really need to know exactly what's happening and where you're at so you can save enough for, um, for different parts of the day, different filming sessions. And the thing with every trip you do is different, eh? So, like, what works on that trip may not yeah. necessarily, like, being in that windlock, it's like a whole different scenario. Yeah. It'd be six days 
with nothing. Yeah. You can't access power or anything like that, so. Yeah, whereas some trips are like two days on the beach where it's not as sort of important. Yeah, but when you've got your ute there and you can charge yeah, off bits yeah. and pieces or like full on. But yeah, I think this worked pretty well. So. Yeah, so what we had was a solar panel. If you go back and watch the episodes, we had a solar panel frame up here over the outboard. Um, I think it was a 60 or an 80 watt. I think it was 80 watt. Yeah. Yeah, so a 45 amp battery in the front, fully strapped down, and then we've got the, um, can you see that? Yeah, we've got the solar charger here, so that's the, um, the regulator, regulating how much power is coming in from the solar panel, into the battery, and then out of the battery, up into our fuse board here, and everything is fused, all our charging points. Um, the sounder, which sits there underneath Dan's legs, Oh yeah, there you go, little Garmin yeah, sounder. sounder. Go back and watch the episodes. Actually, I'll put it up now, and and then you can you can have a quick glimpse of all of all of our gear in the front here in the bow, how it all works, and then I'll put another clip up now of a photo on the beach. Well, not on the beach, but on the the side of a of the Wenlock River as we ended our trip, and we had to pull everything out of the boat and drag the tinny out of the water. We've got everything laid out, everything that we took for six days on the river. But I think that set up with the solar and that battery if you're out in the full sun all the time was pretty damn good. Yeah, yeah. we, we found that uh, the, the, the river that we chose, the Wenlock River, pretty shaded. it was quite shaded, yeah, it's very, because of the time of year we did it, um, the water was quite low and you feel like you're down in a valley and a lot of the trees will come up over and it's like going through a tunnel of trees, it was really cool, but not a lot of sun. So when we go for a hike, we'd, we'd sort of set the boat up in the sun and charge the batteries and go for a hike. Um, we've got the two rear compartments here. So this side is normally all our wet gear and the fuel. Um, we keep cherubin pots, stuff like that in there. And then the other side... Food compartment. Yeah, it was our food compartment. But which, I think we could have sorted that a little bit better, eh? Yeah. I think we're going to maybe put... Like shelves or something? Shelves or... Maybe even like maybe even if we had like a ply and like you could pull boxes out like yeah. that, maybe I think, eh? Hey, because it would just end up being a mess by the end of it. Yeah. Not which, that we had much food. Like it was really like flour and we took some eggs, but it was like all our cooking utensils yeah. and stuff and it was just a mess. And you can see Nate's pretty OCD. So like, <laughs> he wasn't well, not handling OCD. pretty good. Looking at the build of the boat. <laughs> <laughs> I was fine with it. <laughs> um, Anderson plug on the back here. So that was for our solar panel. That runs charged to the bow of the boat. Um, while we're up here, this is our outboard, little two-stroke Mercury, um, 15 horsepower. The donk. The donk. The donk. And it's it's quite it's old. Right. It's 2006, but it bloody went good. Like it does have it. It's got like a little. What would you call it? Moments. It's got yeah. Has moments. It's got a moment every time you start it. Yeah. It does the same thing. And right. when you're at, when we're up at um off that that beach right up the top there, eh? I got shit myself. <laughs> We'd be yeah. like two or three k's offshore, yeah, and I'd like... be like, you'd be here plumbing, and okay, come on, let's. Start. And the, the worst thing is you can see land, but like, imagine if you're yeah. stuck out there. And yeah, like, and but it did and start every time. It did. Yeah. That's the thing. Like it does the same thing every time, but then it, it always starts. So yeah. we need to get that looked at. It's like something any, to do in the carby. Yeah, it's like any motor. You get to know. You get yeah. to know it, eh? Yeah. It's like any motorbike or something like that. You know when to choke yeah. it or you don't choke it or. Yeah. Yeah, and Dan and I have got tools on board to pull anything apart. So. So yeah, 15 horsepower Mercury outboard. We would like something a bit newer, but it's doing the job right now, so. Um, and it's such a great little hull, this one, Stesco Tripper. It's quite stable, like Dan and I can jump from front to back. That's the whole idea. Yeah. You know, this is me right on the edge, and it hardly moves. Like for a little boat. Oh, it's good as gold. Yeah. By the amount of times we were, like I was only joking before about saying both on the side, but the amount of times we were both on that side of the boat trying to pull a fish and yeah. something like that, eh? We did like it. Yeah. Yeah, it's normally me, I'm hooked up to a big fish and Dan's trying to net. Right. <laughs> Netting my fish for me. <laughs> but yeah, we're both... I'm normally in the bag here trying to get me lure on. Alright, we dropped out for a second there. But yeah, we can, we, Dan and I can both jump on either side of the, the boat here and it, it hardly moves, which is really impressive for such a small boat. Um, so, and it displaces water quite, quite well, so it's very stable. You normally have to choose between a boat being stable and displacing the water when you're cutting through chop. But this boat, for a little tinny, and we've had quite a few little boats, um, different brands. I'm not going to say what brands they were, but um, this and this is this goes as good as any of them. It doesn't leak. <laughs> doesn't leak. That's the most That's important, important, important thing. <laughs> when you're in crop country, you don't want your boat to leak. And the biggest thing is knowing your boat. I, I find if you've had to rely on, like every, well not everyone, but a lot of people that had boats, but 
if you if you've had to rely on your boat and basically live out of it for three to sort of three days or more you sort of learn your boat and you really start to trust it and get to know it and build like a sounds a bit weird but build a relationship with your boat you know like you you, you really know your boat inside and out and that's how it should be you were lonely. <laughs> i was lonely out there in the bush so this is this is what we built this is immaculate eye so both of these lift up we've got um marine grade ply and then marine carpet on top and basically you can see a bit of it there that's um contact adhesive yeah, i was just going to say that yeah that's what you use contact adhesive, yeah right? yeah so it all and none of that's peeled up at all well, that's stuck yeah Bloody it's done pretty good especially eh? when you've got salt water going over stuff all the time if yeah you chop. and then whenever we get out of the out of the, the ocean normally dan and i will just absolutely flood this thing with a gurney and get all the stink out of it and it is still stick but it's probably oh, the only it's... downside of having a bit of carpet on there is like yeah. it's like that tune we got in yeah there's shit everywhere eh? but, yeah. yeah and then you get the smell yeah. um we've also got a channel you can see here so dan shuts that for a sec you can see there's a piano hinge all the way along here which obviously will get water in um, that drips through here into this channel on either side and then just runs straight through into the hull um, we've got a rod holder either side here for trolling um, this here this mounts a ram mount that's where we fit the ipad and the ipad we run the hema maps wherever we go so we can we always know with no reception we know where we are at all times um, gives you gps coordinates in case you get lost what else we got oh that's my finished measuring device Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's Nate. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, the but rod the holders. Rod holders up yeah. this side. Oh, there's rods on this side. Here we go. Perler. Yeah. God, they work well. Yeah. There you go. So that's just a bit of 40 mil PVC tube, and with a flange on it, and cut through the seat. And on the back here, we've just got these elastic clips. So basically your rods are out of the way. Simple but effective, eh? Yeah. Like that, like having stuff all over your boat when you're trying to catch fish or do anything in a boat, like it's just such a pain in the bum. Well, that's why. stored properly, like you just, everything makes everything easier yeah. at the end of the day to work around. Yeah, and safer. Like that's, yeah. that's why we fit this boat out the way we did so that during the day, everything's off the deck. It's all stored away. Even your rods, like you're not stepping on those. Like this, this rod here has got a hook on it, but it's hard against the side of the boat there on the gunnels. So it's safer. Like when you're in, when you're out in the middle of nowhere and you're days away from help, you don't. You just need to limit mm. any um, injuries. Don't yeah, you? Nice, nice. yeah. Because it can sense bulletproof. Yeah, yeah. Real quick. This boat, this size, at 3.75 is rated to four people. Maximum 20 horsepower. What else have we got, mate? The plong. The plong. That's not a part of the boat. But like... This thing is gold, yeah, though, isn't it? Gold. I'd have to be honest, I'd never seen one before you brought yeah, it. Yeah, well, I've had quite a, quite a few people ask yeah. about this. That was so much better than Anchor, eh? Yeah, it was For just... what we were doing. Yeah. 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 We use it to steer, for, like everything. Yeah. Because you can just drop it into the water and it. I with them every morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, that was like, especially going down the wind, like when that was like, not that it looked like on the on the film look didn't look like the water was running that no, quick when i was actually re-watching it back but yeah. it was actually it was some fast. of those days it was fast and you could drop that down and spin yeah. the boat around and get it to move you couldn't do that with an anchor yeah so we, yeah and if you've done anything like that before the rocks like when you're moving that quick you can't control the outboard well you can't control your boat with the outboard because you've, you're already punching downstream quite fast um so dropping the plonk and the rocks come up really quick so dan would be on the bow and um and i can't really see what's going on like 100 200 mil below the surface i can't see it and so dan's up on the bow telling me left right and then if you've got to stop in an instant i can just drop the plonk at the back and and it will then spin the bow around and straighten you up i suppose it's just a matter of getting the right size weight for your yeah. size boat yeah so that that sort of worked perfectly i don't know that that'd probably weigh maybe 10 kilo i'd reckon Somewhere i don't know you, you're the one doing the bicep kills with it yeah, even <laughs> No, but Dan's... I think about 50 actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. But yeah, it probably would be about 10, so that's probably a good weight. It would yeah. be 20 kilos there. Dan's right. That's um, that's the idea. So I think you just melt down your lead to suit whatever size boat you've got. So yeah, I've had that in a in a quite a big boat, in a 5 metre or a 5.6 metre um, fiberglass boat. Not that exact one, a bigger one, but it does the same job. You just need the right weight. So this is a great it. little boat for punching up, even into like here for crabbing and stuff. That's yeah. what I like. Some people go that's out and buy it. Yeah. Sorry, mate. Um, that's right, interrupting. But no, like even people sometimes go and get like big boats to go in rivers like this, and there. Yeah. If you're into doing a bit of crabbing and you know getting right up in those little tiny creeks, it, you know yeah. feeder creeks and that, something small like this is perfect. Yeah. You can and really sneak right up in there, and you know. 
and go in, go in shallow water, like yeah, over the 100%. flats. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like Dan and I have had to push this through through some shallow flats, but we're talking like 100 mil of water. Like any any deeper than that, you can really sort of poke through without having to get out and push, which is really handy. That's the Stesco Tripper, yeah. which we absolutely love. We've got a few questions. Can you hold the camera, mate? Yeah. We've had a few people ask some questions. I'll just go through a couple of them. Uh, Jace in Newey, Newcastle. He says, what what year is the hull and do Stesco still make that model? Um, this this boat is, a two, I think it's 2006 and the motor as well. Um, and yes, yeah, Stesco do still make the tripper. I don't know if it's exactly the same, like the, the shape of the bow and everything, but they, they do still make it. Um, Emma in Gladstone in Queensland. Why do you guys use such a small boat? Isn't that dangerous? Well, Dan and I were just talking about this. It would be, we need to get two boats happening. It's a bigger boat to shoot out to the reefs and that. Not too big, because we still want to be able to tow it without it being super heavy. But um, we like this little boat because it gets you into places. So it is dangerous, like there are crocodiles, a lot of crocodiles up north. Um, and Dan and I like, you know, we've both got families, so we want to limit the risk. But if you're not getting in there, then you're not having fun. And the only way to get in there to do the type of things that we're gonna that we want to do is in a small boat. So, yeah, definitely. Like you couldn't you, you couldn't have done that when lock tripping a bigger boat. No. Nah. Um, there were quite a few times where we had to push this, and we were. We were it was struggling. heavy, man. eh? like it was. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Gear, I don't know what it weighed with all that gear, but it was. It was. It was heavy. I reckon a couple hundred kilos. Yeah. Yeah, we'll spend pushing well, the, it. I think these, so the Stesco Tripper weighs about 90 kilos, the hull itself. The little outboard would have to be 35. Yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah, oh, at least, yeah. 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 At least. And then all of Dan's gear. Dan had like 100 kilos. Like lures, gear. lures, heaps <laughs> of lures. <laughs> I think I, had, I was so under prep with lures. Eh? Uh, you pulled out your tackle box, I'm like, holy hell. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's like a candy shop. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, I got this one. Yeah, so that's why, Emma, because um, it gets us into places. And Greg in Cairns, what sounder do you use? Well, we just showed you the little Garmin. Um, we haven't really used that properly yet. Uh, the trips, so in the current episode, so we're up to about episode eight, I think, and you haven't seen us use a sounder yet. We use them in the big, in the big boat, we use Lorance. We use a Lorance Live and a Lorance Carbon in a 12 inch. But in the little tinny, um, yeah, so what we're up to episode eight, we're just using the birds really to, to fine tune. Yeah, we don't really use the sound of much no. at all, really. We probably should, but yeah. um, particularly in the creeks, like we're just not into it. We're, we're sight casting for Barramundi and, you know, we know what to look for in these, in the, in the little creeks like the Wenlock. So it's more visually on top of the water than what's going on below. It's a bit different in the territory in that where you're trolling a lot for Barramundi, but yeah. It's, I think it's funny just actually like just searching for them. Yeah. It's so easy to pull up and go, oh yeah, on a sound and go, there's a fish, there's fish, there's fish, you're in a big school. But yeah. I don't know, I always think it's it. cheating a little bit, yeah. but it's not really. I mean, you, it's good to find deep holes for them. Mm. But yeah, yeah, that's about it's it. Yeah. Over and out on the sunny coast. All right, we'll see you guys next week for episode nine, I think. Yep. Is it nine? So, eight or nine. Yeah, nine. Either way, eight or, eight or nine, we are on the west coast of Cape York in the Gulf Cafeteria. In this tinny, catching tuna, cooking the fish on the beach. Yeah. That's what we're up to that day under the big tree. We'll yeah, that, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. We were starving hungry. That's right. Cooked the cod up. Yeah, you got that cod going yeah. there, just like trolling across like a bombie, eh? and yeah. you kept on just saying, nah, go back, go back. And I'm like, oh, come on, man. Like, how many goes are we at? But yeah, persistence paid off. You know, hey, it's a yeah. good size cod. Yeah, got us. So, up. yeah, definitely. All right, so we'll see you next week. See you guys.